Hey everyone, welcome to How Chic. So today I am going to go through one of my first episodes of my Science and Skincare series. So this is the skincare routine and this is the basic outline that you have to know. I come from a science background, so I want to give as much knowledge that I can give to you and make it accessible and understandable for everyone. So I want to go through ingredients, I want to go through studies and how things work with my scientific knowledge and give you an insight into the science of skincare. If you enjoy this scientific skincare series, then please do comment below and let me know what other things that you want me to look at, specific ingredients, other studies, what evidence there is, and I can go through it with you. Starting off with this series about knowing what ingredients are in your basic skincare line, sometimes you're really confused on what products to have to have good skin. So the first thing that you need to know is knowing your skin type. There are skin types and then there are skin concerns. Starting off with the skin type, so you either have oily skin, combination, normal or dry skin. So you can look for ingredients and textures to aid that skin type. So if you're oily skin, you'll see oiliness around the cheeks, your T-zone, um, just everywhere. And if you're combination, you have different parts of your face with oiliness and dryness or just normal to oily or even dry to normal. And then normal skin, you are the blessings of this world. You do not have anything particularly oily, nor particularly dry. And then with dry skin, you don't produce a lot of oil and your skin is constantly dry, flaky, so you need a lot more moisturizer to moisturize your skin. Then comes the skin concern. So you have your skin type and then you pair it with whatever skin concerns you may have. So this could be acne, spot prone, dehydration, which is not to be confused with dry skin because you can have oily skin but also dehydrated and I'll get into that in probably a later video. You can have redness, sensitivity, hyperpigmentation and also aging skin. So knowing your baseline skin type and then knowing what concerns come along with that. So when it comes to building your skincare routine, you want to have something very simple but effective. This is a quote from Coco Chanel where it says, simplicity is the keynote of all true elegance. And this can be applied to skincare because you do not need a 50 step skincare routine to achieve beautiful skin. You only need a few steps and you're good to go. Starting off with the daytime routine, you'll start off with a cleanser. This could be an active cleanser or you could just use water depending on your skin type. So sometimes when my skin is excessively dry, I only use water for this morning. Then you have your serum. This is optional and this is where the fun part of skincare can begin. And you can try all the different ingredients and I can go through the different studies of what type of ingredients are good to try. Then you want to protect your skin from moisture loss and this is by using a cream. It can hydrate the skin but also create a moisture barrier to prevent transepidermal water loss. Then after your cream you apply sunscreen and this is to protect from UV damage which is the main contributor to many skincare problems such as aging, hyperpigmentation, dryness, sorts. Then when it comes to nighttime, you want to have something slightly different but not too different. So the difference is you want to add in an extra cleanse step. So you want to do a double cleanse. So you want to have a cleansing oil or balm to remove the excess makeup and also the sunscreen from your face. And then you want to go in to clean your skin with a cleanser. Serum is optional but is the fun and exciting part of skincare and then you finish off with the cream. So the products that I'm going to go through are cleansing oils, cleansers, creams, and sunscreen. So I'm gonna go through what type of ingredients actually make up the cleansing oils, the cleansers, the moisturizers, and the sunscreens. Starting off with cleansing oils and cleansers, I'm going to describe to you what ingredients are removing the excess dirt, sebum, oil, makeup, everything. The ingredients that do this are grouped into what is called a surfactant. So a surfactant looks like this. It has a fat soluble tail and it has a water soluble head. So the fat soluble tail is hydrophobic, which means it is water hating. So this head region is a hydrophilic 
region where it is water loving. So when you apply this surfactant to your face, the hydrophobic tails are attaching to the excess dirt, sebum, oil, and lifts it away from the skin and therefore cleaning the skin. So there are many different types of surfactants and they can be grouped into four parts. So there's non-ionic, which has no charge, and it's a super strong detergent. It's rare to find them in cleansers, but it's more common as an emulsifier, which is found in cleansing oils. So these could be pegs, sorbitans, and lurus. Then we have the anionic, which they have a strong negative charge, and they can be very effective, but they can be quite stripping for the skin. However, this is what gives most cleansers that foamy texture. And the example of this is the sodium lauryl sulfate or just general soaps overall. Then we have the cationic and this has a strong positive charge. And this is extremely harsh and it's also very rare in cleansers and it's more common in emulsifiers. This is one that I rarely see in skincare anymore. Most of the ingredients used in emulsifying cleansing oils are actually non-ionic. Then we have amphoteric, which has both positive and negative charge. And this is a very effective detergent and with very low irritation, but it doesn't have as much of a foamy texture as the anionic. Examples of this is cocoa amidopropyl bentane and sodium cocoa amphoacetate. So in terms of cleansing oils, I have two examples that I have used and used in the past. One that I've used previously and I've shown you guys before is the Vanilla & Co Clean It Zero and this is such a cute packaging for it. Um, it's got this like ombre effect but I finished this a long time ago but I do love 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 this so much. This contains ethyl hexyl palmitate and cetyl ethyl hexanoate. These are synthetic oils and they bind to the sebum, the makeup and melt everything away. And then when you do apply water, there are emulsifiers here, which are the two different pegs. This helps to draw all of the impurities away from your skin. Then my second cleansing oil will have to be the Purito from Green Cleansing Oil. And this has six different oils in here. They have olive, sunflower, jojoba, sweet almond oil, grapeseed oil and vegetable oil. These oils help to attract the oils and melt away all of the makeup and sunscreen. So they have two different surfactants which are emulsifiers and these are sorbet 30 tetraloate and glycerol caprylate. And this helps to lift out all of the impurities out of your skin as well. So then moving on to cleansers, we have the Cosrx Low pH Good Morning Gel Cleanser. I have recently been using this and I've been using this for about two weeks so far and I've been loving it. I've been struggling with so many breakouts but it's really helped with my acne prone but very dry skin. So this contains an amphoteric surfactant which is cocomidopropyl bentane and then it has the anionic surfactant which is the sodium lauryl methyl isothionate and then we have polysorbate. So you have moisturizing and soothing ingredients such as butylene glycol, Japanese nobel, cedar, lotus, elm bark, allotoin, and caprylol glycol. Then on to another cleanser which I have been going back and forth to since years and years ago. I've explained this cleanser so many times and this is the Sana Soy Cleanser. So this is also using an amphoteric surfactant which is the cocomidal propyl bentane and then it also has stearic acid but the good thing about this is that it's highly moisturizing and soothing with the glycerin to draw moisture in palmatic acid vitamin e with lots of soybean seed extracts and protein extracts then i have the kios calendula cleanser this is also using the amphoteric surfactant which is the cocomidal propyl bentane this also contains the anionic surfactant, which is the sodium cocal glycinate. It has the hydrating ingredients such as glycerin and moisturizing ingredients such as citrus, lemon peel oil and propylene glycol. Then finally, we have the Long Clums Mulan Mousse. Personally, I feel like this feels amazing. So the main thing with this is that if you have sensitive skin types, then please do not use this. This contains sodium lauryl sulfate, which is that harsh cleanser, but then again, it foams up to such a beautiful lather and it does contain pegs. 
another thing that's in here that could lead to sensitivity if you do use this every day is the salicylic acid and that is a BHA that exfoliates deep within the skin so this I do not use every day I use it once a week as a very very gentle exfoliant compared to most exfoliants this does work wonders for decongesting the skin and this also contains glycerin, bentane, propylene glycol and French rose extract for that extra hydration and antioxidants. So then moving on to creams, so you want to create a moisture barrier for your skin and this is to prevent transepidermal water loss. In creams you want to look for two main things. So one is hemectin. So this is where the ingredients penetrate deep within the skin and it absorbs water from the air and into your skin so that it leads to extra hydration. Then you want ingredients which are emollient, which are the ingredients that form a barrier for your skin so that it prevents that water loss. So some examples that I've used, which is the Laneige Perfect Renew Cream. So this has glycerin, butylene glycol and sodium hyaluronate, which actually helps to draw moisture from the air and into your skin. So it's super hydrating. It has a lot of ingredients which creates that barrier for your skin, such as dimethicone, cyclopentosilazane, squalane, and it has seed oil. And then you have extra ingredients such as vitamin E, which is very soothing, and it also has blue ginger for that extra antioxidant. Then I have my OG Sana Soy Cream, which also is the same line as the cleanser that I've just shown you. The main emollient is squalane, and then for the humectants you have the soybean protein and the cyclohexosilane, and then you have the soybean seed extract and vitamin E, which are very soothing extra ingredients. Then moving on to the Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream. So for the emollients, there's glycerin and silicones. And for the humectants, there's squalane and cyclohexosilane. And then we have a low level of salicylic acid, which means that is for anti-inflammatory reasons. Then the last example, which is a super lightweight gel texture for oily skin. We have glycerin, squalane and hyaluronic acid for that hydrating capacity. Then we have dimethicone, cyclohexosilane, and seed oil as the emollient to protect. Then we have vitamin E and also broccoli extract, which vitamin E is very soothing and the broccoli extract provides really good antioxidant levels. So then the last step is the sunscreen and I have a few examples here. I have both examples of physical and chemical sunscreens. Both do absorb UV rays but the only difference between the two is that the physical sunscreen reflects light which can lead to a white cast. So the first example is the Can Make Mermaid Skin UV Gel and this one is actually number two which is the whitening one but the one that I am explaining to you should be the pink version which I've used up. This contains both chemical and physical sunscreens, so such as zinc oxide, titanium dioxide as your physical, and then the others, which I do not want to try and pronounce, are chemical sunscreens. And then I have the Claire's Midday UV Gel, which is a physical sunscreen primarily, which has the zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. And then the last one, which I've previously used, but I haven't got it with me right now, is the La Roche Posay and Thelius Ultralight Invisible Fluid, SPF 50. And this is a chemical sunscreen and they have four different types of chemical UV filters. So that is everything covered from the very basic level of skincare. So you have your cleansing oils, main cleansers, moisturizer and sunscreen. I hope this video was educational. It helps you be more aware of what ingredients do and how they work. And if you like these type of videos, then please do like and subscribe. And if you want to just chat to me, anything beauty, fashion, lifestyle, then please do message me on Instagram at Tower of Chic. And comment below what information do you want to know about in the science of skincare, whether it's ingredients, whether it's scientific studies, what evidence there is, then please do comment below and then I can get back to you. And finally, I give you all of my hugs and my love. Bye. Be wrong, I'ma be alright cause you, you could try to pull me back down